John said, member owner of Patty Pan Cooperative, um, also a co-op clinic peer advisor. And recently I was involved with launching another co-op, which is a producer co-op for grocery home delivery. It's called New Day Cooperative Distribution. Um, and today we're gonna talk about marketing our co-op advantage, um, which is basically just how do we put ourselves out there as co-ops? How do we um, give our customers reason to buy from us because we're co-ops? And I also just want to go over um, some general marketing ideas and then um, look at them through the lens of marketing as co-ops. Um, and one of the facets of co-op advantage is the fact that we do skill sharing and um, just we have a shared knowledge base. So I'm hoping also to hear from um, the attendees also about what your co-ops are doing to put yourselves out there and market your co-op advantage. Uh, so the co-op advantage, um, what is the co-op advantage? I mean, it's basically everything that makes co-ops awesome. And um, most people who are affiliated with co-ops are pretty passionate about it, um, even evangelical about it. So I think an important part of co-op marketing has to do with getting the word out about what makes us special. And the cooperative model is a mission-driven business structure. Um, if all we cared about were money, then we would probably be running different kinds of businesses, but we're running cooperatives. And I think that's something that um, customers and just people in our radius um, really respond to, especially now. Um, you know, I think we're all kind of raw from everything that's going on. So hearing from businesses that are really trying to do something different and something authentic can really resonate. So, um, you know, some aspects of the co-op advantage are, of course, treating employees as human beings, especially, you know, worker owners, um, treating customers as human beings, and we call it relationship marketing. So basically, um, you know, who are your customers? What matters to them? How can you speak to what matters to them? And as co-ops, we are uniquely um, suited to doing that. Um, we tend to practice conscientious sourcing, uh, whether it's a food co-op or um, a business that's producing a product. Um, you care about where your materials come from and you know you really care about um, being conscious, conscientious about the entire supply chain. Um, you want to put out quality products and services because this is a business that is operating with integrity. And again, if all you cared about was money, then you probably wouldn't be part of a co-op. Um, and also community and environmental awareness, like that co-ops are generally geared towards the greater good, whether it's interpersonal or environmental. And, you know, in our marketings, you know, we are always looking for ways to communicate about that. And it's especially important to communicate about that because it's an important part of what makes us different. And I think there's so much noise out there in general, um, media and social media and marketing and advertising, um, how do you stand out? And in a way, standing out can just be a matter of 
keeping it simple and keeping it straightforward and um, being all about something that matters. So reasons to market the co-op advantage. Um, it provides a unique selling proposition. The unique selling proposition is something that's useful to think about for your entire business um, is what are you offering to customers that makes you different? What's going to give your customers and potential customers a reason to buy your product and support your business? You say, well, we're a co-op. We, um, you know, we care about the greater good and we are doing our best to run our businesses thoughtfully and with integrity. Um, putting out the co-op advantage in your marketing also holds your co-op accountable. It, um, if you are putting out to the world that, you know, we're running this business in a way that is aligned with some, um, some larger mission, then you really have to um, come back to that. You have to be evaluating in an ongoing way whether you are actually doing that. Um, Co-op Advantage is also um, important for building relationships. Um, I think a lot of customers will want to support your co-op specifically because it's a co-op. And as you get to know your customers and your community, it just makes you a stronger business. And that's why it's good for business. It gives customers a reason to buy from you. Okay, so we are having this conversation in the context of um, of what's going on in the world today, and that presents some um, some challenges and opportunities as far as marketing. Um, I read a New York Times article a few months ago. They were talking about COVID advertising. And they were talking about how it, a lot of it has been kind of cookie cutter. And a lot of advertising you'll see like an empty street and um, a bleak landscape and then it'll zero in on a, you know, child with an ice cream cone or something and then there will be an uplifting message. And since so much of the advertising that we're seeing is so similar, you know, it's an opportunity to say something different, which I think really involves um, looking inside and thinking about what is it that you want to say? What is it that matters to you? What is it that you want your customers to relate to? Um, when we launched, I mentioned that I started a co-op recently that, that was a home delivery, a producer-owned home delivery service. And we launched that business. Our site went live on um, May 31st. And then beginning of June, everything exploded after um, you know, the George Floyd incident. And we had to grapple with, we started this business, we wanted to tell people about this business, but this is the wrong time to be talking about ourselves. Um, so, you know, we, we had to do some serious soul searching around that. We decided to just hang back and not do any marketing for this first couple of weeks, which gave us a bit of a handicap, but it was certainly the right thing to do because um, it just wasn't about us at that point. And so, yeah, this, 
this landscape that we're working in and living in is really going to inform all of our marketing at this point. And I think the challenge, which is also the solution and is also an opportunity, is to bring authenticity to our marketing. So instead of um, doing the cookie cutter type ad, um, we really have to go inward and uh, take a good hard look at ourselves and think, you know, what are we really trying to say? What is going to resonate? Um, why does this matter? I think the co-ops are uniquely positioned to do that, again, because we are mission-driven organizations. So how can marketing be authentic? I mean, we're used to thinking about marketing as advertising, which is one of the most inauthentic forms of communication you can really come up with. Um, I think language really matters a lot. Um, very often when I sit down to write marketing copy, what comes to mind most quickly and easily um, are things that um, just cliches, things that I'm, I'm used to hearing. And when we talk about our co-ops, there are some, you know, there's some pat language that we use. Um, I'm actually drawing a blank on that now. But when you describe your co-op, when you describe why it's important to be operating as a co-op and what your co-op can bring to your customers and, you know, to your community, um, I think it's really important to do everything you can to communicate that in fresh language. Like, what is this? How can you say this in a way that somebody else isn't saying it? And that sometimes involves like just revisiting and taking a fresh look at why you're doing what you're doing and why you're doing it the way you're doing it. Um, kindness is a really import of, important part of marketing with authenticity and listening. You know, um, marketing at its best is based on relationships. It's knowing who your customers are, knowing what they need, um, being, um, just being compassionate and seeing things from the customer's point of view. Um, you want to offer quality goods and services. And, you know, that's part of operating with, um, with integrity. And I think it's also part of the co-op advantage because um, so often in co-ops, we love our work. We're, we're doing what we're doing because we care about it. And that gives customers a reason to support our co-ops. Um, and then our opportunity and challenge is to communicate about how we love our work and how that translates in, into um, high quality goods and services. So there are two sides of marketing. There's the vision. Um, it, what is your co-op about? What matters to it? Like, who are you? And then there's the nuts and bolts, which are all of the things you do to um, communicate about what you're doing and why it matters. So you know, the vision is, I mean, it has to do with why you choose to structure your business as a co-op and also what, what things related to the greater good is your co-op doing. 
it's the why, you know, why is your co-op in business in the first place? What are you going to say that will give customers and potential customers a reason to support your co-op? And then as far as the nuts and bolts and the tangible things, you know, that's everything that your marketing department does. That's everything that your marketing budget goes towards. So marketing is really about everything that your co-op does. Everything that your co-op does, um, you know, it's, it's your identity. It's how you choose to frame your operations. The customer service um, is, of course, an important part, of, important part of marketing. It is, you know, how your how your employees and your worker owners are going to represent the co-op to your customer base. It's also your product quality because if you are doing something that is worthwhile, then you're giving your customers a reason to buy what you have and a reason to um, support your co-op. It's also uh, cleaning up after mistakes, which I think is one of the most important aspects of marketing and customer service. You know, when you do something wrong, how do you respond to customer feedback about it? Um, and this also comes back around to um, being kind and being authentic. And you know, I think sometimes that if you make a mistake and you deal with it in a graceful way, your co-op, your business is going to come out looking better than if you hadn't made the mistake in the first place. Um, the attitudes of member owners and employees, if you are, you know, if the people who are representing your business are um, are really engaged, then they're going to care more about the customers. They're going to represent the co-op well. And, you know, co-ops are in a unique position to do this well. Um, my, the worker co-op that I belong to, called Patty Pan, and before COVID, our main business was selling hot ready to eat food at farmers markets and in the farmers market community one thing that everybody says as far as um, increasing your odds of success is that if you have the owner in the booth you're going to sell more that customers at farmers markets like to see owners in the booth representing the business now we have eight member owners. So instead of having one person who can only be in so many places, we have eight people who can be in a lot of different places. And that's, you know, a really wonderful way of marketing the business that, um, you know, businesses that aren't co-ops don't necessarily have. And community connections are an important part of marketing as well. Because um, you are, I mean, I was going to say you are putting out in the world that you're a mission-driven business, but it's not just about putting it out in the world as a message that you want to uh, tie to your marketing. It's also at the core of who you are as a business, and that will give people a reason to um, support your business as well. So then marketing is also everything your co-op does to promote yourself. And again, this is 
what your marketing personnel do. It's what your marketing budget goes towards. So social media, um, paid advertising, which you know you may or may not even be up for doing. Um, signage, which um, I mean, signage is so important as a marketing tool. It's what tells people at the point of purchase what they're buying and why. It also gives people a reason to um, come into your business. And then the point of sale marketing and price, it, you know, your price communicates something about your product as well. If you choose to have a low price, um, you may be communicating that you are providing a good value, but if you choose a high price, you're communicating that you've put a lot into this and people should find it worth paying for. And then community relationships, um, you know, that was in the last slide as well, as far as, um, you know, marketing and marketing as, you know, everything your business does, but marketing, excuse me, community, community relationships are also, um, you know, something that your co-op may choose to invest in as part of its marketing budget and um, put time into it um put time into it as a way to share you know who you are and drive business so there are four main types of customers and we are grossly oversimplifying here because there are so many different types of people and you know a customer may be looking for something different um you know on any given day but some customers are looking for information some people are looking for connection i mean some people are interested in your products and services because they want you to like them and um you know i think we do tend to like people more when they buy from us um, some people want to get something done. They have a specific need that they are looking to fill. And, um, you know, say, I'm looking for something for dinner. Um, what do you have that will feed my family dinner? And then you show what's there. And then uh, there are customers who want to make everything about themselves. So, you know, they'll kind of reframe everything you say. Um, in some terms that, um, you know, basically are about them. And I find when I'm marketing, when a customer approaches my booth and I'm selling something, um, I try to, again, at the risk of grossly oversimplifying, figure out which four of these, cat which one of these four categories a customer fits into and then tailor sales strategy to provide for that. And I think that as far as marketing the co-op advantage, um, you're most likely to get traction with customers who are looking for connection because um, they, they want to know about, about your business. And also with customers who are looking for information. And, um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of customers who say, oh, I see your co-op, what does that mean? And that is an opportunity to start talking about it. It's an opportunity to show how this business is different from most of the other businesses out there. Um, and, you know, one thing I found, we're a worker co-op and from time to time we get 
people who will ask us, how do I join your co-op? And the answer is really, well, you get a full-time job with us for eight months and then you um, commit a chunk of money to buying in. And that's not really what people are necessarily looking for. I mean, I think they're, they see the word co-op, so they think it's a consumer co-op. But that, that is an opportunity to explain to people um, just who we are and what we're about and how this works. You know, there are customers who want a lot of details about um, how the co-op works. And when somebody asks those questions, it's really a wonderful opportunity to start putting it out there. And again, just showing how we're different from a conventional business. There are two main types of marketing. Uh, brand marketing it, brand marketing is getting the word out about your business. So it's, um, say, you know, if you do a public radio endorsement, that's brand marketing. You want people to know that your business is out there. It's unlikely that people who um, hear... Um, a public radio endorsement are going to immediately go and buy something. But this kind of marketing builds up over the long term and it gives customers and potential customers a reason to buy from your business. Um, I heard, heard a story from uh, Seth Godin. He's a marketing guru and he was talking about the difference between brand marketing and direct marketing. And he said when he was um, much younger and he was uh, driving cross country for his first real job and he was outside, uh, he was somewhere in Michigan and he saw a billboard for the company that had just hired him. And he was pretty excited. And he thought, wow, they must be really big. And he subsequently found out that this company had just one billboard and he had driven by it. And the reason they put that billboard there was because it was on a road outside in between um, the airport and the convention center. So anybody who flew into this city to go to a conference was going to drive by this billboard. So then his advice about brand marketing is figure out who your prime customers are. Um, who are the people who are most likely to respond to your message and even be evangelical about it. Um, figure out who they are, figuring out, figure out where you are most likely to reach them and then do a lot of concentrated advertising geared at those specific people and set a budget and stick to it even if it seems like nothing happens because with this kind of marketing nothing happens quickly it's something that accrues over time um, he also says as far as um, getting these prime customers who are most likely to be evangelical about your business. Um, you know, in the early phase of marketing what, what you're doing, it's really important to reach them because they're going to have a multiplier effect. They're going to be, um, they're going to be the people who are talking about the business. So if they know about the business and they know why it makes it special, um, then they're the people you really want to reach. Um, then the other kind of marketing is direct marketing, which is doing things that are specifically going to make people buy from you. And, um, you know, price is a form of direct marketing. Sales are a form of direct marketing, although, you know, lowering your price isn't necessarily the best way to get long-term repeat customers. Um, you know, with our home delivery co-op, we have an order window. It opens on Monday, it closes on Thursday. 
So we send out an email saying the order period is open. That is direct marketing. It's something that is specifically geared towards getting people to buy something. And then we send out another email at the, um, towards the end of the order period when there's about 12 hours left. And we send it out to people who have um, started to place an order but haven't completed it. So as the order period is closing, um, you have basically 12 hours to complete it or you, know, you can get your food next week. Um, but of these two types of marketing, I think the brand marketing ties in much more with the co-op advantage. And I think even using the .coop domain is a way to get that out there. It's about um, communicating who you are and being a co-op is an important part of who you are. I was trying to think of any kind of example uh, where direct marketing might be tied to the co-op advantage. And um, I really couldn't think of much. I mean, with consumer co-ops, when you get a discount or especially when like discounts are tied to specific days or specific events, um, that's a kind of direct marketing that's tied to co-op advantage. Um, but again, I think most co-op advantage marketing is more brand marketing than direct marketing. It's again about who you are and you know why people are going to want to support your business rather than um, a traditional business. Um, and it's not so much about what's going to make a specific person buy a specific product at a specific moment. So yeah, the co-op advantage is tied to brand marketing. Um, it's in your sign, it's in your name, it's in your identity. And the co-op advantage also um, can drive sales, but it's less common. Um, so I'd like to hear from you all. And again, as co-ops, part of our advantage comes from having a shared knowledge base and um, skill sharing, but are there things that you can think of that your co-op does, or if you're starting a co-op, other co-ops that you see, what, what has um, caught your attention as far as co-op um, co marketing? And um, I guess John's managing the chat. There's um, not much in the chat. It's been pretty quiet, but uh, if people want to unmute and we can kind of open it up to more of a conversation, that would be mm -hmm. fine. Uh, if you do, you can keep, if you do you have more slides, Deborah, otherwise maybe. Uh, no, no, we're getting to the, uh, the conversation part. Yeah, if you want to, maybe you can stop sharing your screen and we can kind of pull it open to the broader uh, okay. group and yeah, just. Uh... Hey, this is Rachel. Can I? Speak yes. or am I interrupting? No, no, no. Um, I, I belong to the uh, the Ashland Foods Co-op, and I think one marketing uh, product is that you can buy as a customer. I pay a hundred dollars lifetime, and that gets me discounts for for foods and different products. And then I think four times a year we get five dollars off the total of our. Um, purchase. So I, I feel like that's an advantage because I feel like I belong to this co-op for, you know, a hundred dollar lifetime uh, fee. Is if that's, if I'm answering what, what yeah. you wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so okay. What, what do you respond to? Yeah. And, and Marcia, feel free to put something in the chat if you want and I'll just read it. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I used to be with a, a taxi cab cooperative, and and even today the the co-op uh, provides free rides to the polls on election days, even for even for the off-year primaries that have like 17% uh, voters, they still do it. And uh, 
Thanks, Tracy. The uh, elections is uh, also, I mean, that's part of being a member owner of a co-op that uh, the, the owners get to elect the board. It's democratically controlled. Um, so uh, we've, uh, the Port Townsend Food Co-op, um, uh, we, we just did board elections and we're actually now uh, going out to member vote with a revision of our articles of incorporation. Uh, and, you know, that has to be approved by the members. And so, so that's sort of, you know, the, 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 this is your co-op. You, you tell us what you want to do with it. Um, and, and, uh, and, and to uh, incentivize that, uh, we're also donating a dollar per vote to the food bank in Port Townsend. Oh. Uh, you had a slide that was talking about authenticity and uh, I definitely that hits a lot with me with uh, like consumer co-ops I, I, I find um, when they're saying that they're trying to find local organic farms or whatever it is I, I'm apt to feel like that's more of an authentic statement that it, because there's more um, buy-in from the workers there or more democratic processes within the purchasing processes or or with our table co-op there's um, I have more um, of a sense that when they're saying that they're paying their way their workers a more fair wage that uh, as it's more of an authentic statement I guess I have more trust and not trust in marketing statements from co-ops. Yeah, it, it is interesting to me that some consumer co-ops market themselves so strongly as co-ops and others don't. Like REI was not marketing itself as a co-op, but it seems like they've been doing it more recently. And is that because people are craving this and needing this now? Right. I, I think too, they, I think they also specifically REI uh, really saw the threat of Amazon and, and, and had to differentiate themselves in an in a area where they used to just be fine. They were, diff they were a specific place, but now that Amazon is, is taking over everything, they had to find a way to, to differentiate their, their identity in the marketplace. Um, I could say a thing or two about uh, the home care co-op that we're starting um, and how we plan to market it. Um, so a, a big part of our marketing uh, strategy will be to emphasize the co-op difference in uh, the home care industry um, since the industry um, in, in, the, in the traditional industry that um, home care aides are, are paid uh, a lot less than they would be in a co-op and the work conditions are, are worse. Um, and this will, being in a, in a co-op will have a direct effect on the service that the home care aides provide because it will reduce the, uh, the, um, the rate of turnover um, and they, they will provide more consistent and quality care over time. Um, so th we, we plan on, on really uh, emphasizing that aspect of, of being a co-op and how it has a direct impact on the workers as well as the, the services that we provide. Yeah, and I think that that's what that really comes from the heart. And right. I, ideally, and you know, if people are under underpaid and stretched thin, it's that much harder for it to come from the heart. So, yeah, in a yeah. Right. One one other thing. I'm sorry, Peter. One of the things that I, I found in, in working with some of the home care co-ops is um, the caregivers really appreciate being able to take the needs of their consumers back into the organization and change policies based on what they're their consumers need. In previous jobs for them, they've been forced to, you know, work by these policies that are set 
thousands of miles away for the benefit of you know an administration or maybe even you know investors and uh so it really creates this kind of feedback loop because uh, right. they, have, they have the voice of the organization that can actually change care and, and raise the standards of care to what people right. need so that's a great point are there other um any comments on on some of the other slides or ideas that are brought up i uh I, I was really appreciative that you talked about uh, how operations really is marketing and because I think you're also very, you know, astute in that um, it's not just uh, what you say you're doing as an organization, it's, it's responding when you, when you fall short of your own statements. Yeah, I, I have found that more often than not, when somebody emails my co-op with a complaint they start it with i really appreciate the fact that you're a co-op but i think to add on to that um as far as paying taxes i mean you're paying taxes on profit or surplus but a co-op also has the opportunity to structure um the way it, it pays for its expenses um, so that there's more profit or less profit. I mean, like my co-op is a worker profit and we've never paid out any surplus because we pay well above the industry average as far as wages and salaries. And that gives us less surplus at the end, but it's still a way of giving back to our members. And, you know, providing benefits falls in that category as well. It all makes the co-op as a business less profitable, but it also helps the co-op to fulfill its mission, which is to meet the needs of its members. How, how do most communities accept co-ops? like the, the cities, uh, I know that the people appreciate them, but how, uh, how does that co-op put back into the community as far as like profits or, you know, if they're not paying higher taxes? Um, do you understand yeah. kind of what I'm saying? Um, well, I was just gonna say that co-ops tend to be rooted in the place that they come from and local business um, has the multiplier advantage for a community. And I'm not sure that every city or community necessarily grasps that, but I think communicating it is an important part of the challenge of marketing the co-op advantage. It's like co-ops are good for their communities and how do we get the word out about that? And I think there is no simple answer to that, but I think a good question is much better than a bad answer. Because uh, co-ops tend to pay their workers more than their competitors who also have more spending power from their uh, staff that goes back into the community as well. And they won't move. So uh, a co-op will never, you know, like the Port Townsend uh, Food Co-op is not going to move to Arizona for cheaper labor, right? It's, <laughs> they can't do that. And uh, even worker co-ops aren't going to be able to move unless the entire workforce is, moves, decides to move and, and agrees on which community to move to. So um, that's another huge advantage. Yeah, and a co-op is going to exhaust all of its options before laying anybody off right right 